Hey, welcome back to the Houston Zoo. I'm here in our mongoose enclosure, and I'd like to thank you for joining us here at the Facebook live stream here at 11 o'clock. Thank you for joining in so that uh, we can bring our zoo to you. Uh, I just dumped a pile of substrate, it's uh, infield clay, and it's mixed with a whole bunch of mealworms. They're at the bottom, so hopefully these guys will start coming over to explore this area, and they'll see all the mealworms, and uh, they are insect eaters, so they do like to eat all the insects. Over in Africa, where they naturally live, they actually like to eat a lot of the uh, termites and those kind of insects that they find, and so hopefully they'll roll over here and find them. They also really like all of this substrate that just got put down. Uh, every six months or so, we end up going over and uh, having to retill this whole area. And that's because these guys like to dig holes. They're a hole digger type of animal. They like to live underground. So they dig so many holes through here that it becomes very treacherous for them and for us. So about every six months to a year, we'll take the tiller out, we'll till it all up, and then they get to dig all fresh holes. It's nice and soft. It's like a mongoose winter wonderland in March. There you go. Uh, these guys can uh, go after a wide variety of things. They are omnivores, so they eat both veggies and meat. They will go after birds. They actually will sometimes go after snakes, but they're not the ones that you think about whenever you're going after snakes. These guys are actually abandoned mongoose. Those ones are the giant mongooses that live in India. Uh, these guys would probably go after a snake, but it's not the one-on-one -on -one that we think about from Ricky Tikki Tavi. Uh, Amy asks, what sounds do they make? So these guys make a wide variety of sounds. They're mostly chirping sounds, though. They do a lot of like... <laughs> Apparently, I don't do a very good mongoose sound. It's fine. Now, for all of you joining in, I'd like to give a huge shout out to KDIST for actually incorporating all of these digital media, these things that are happening, the live streams, the webcams that we have here at the zoo. They're actually taking all that and putting it into their curriculum so that uh, they can teach things all about the zoo, which is super awesome. Go KDIST! You guys finding them? Now these guys are pretty cool. They can live to be about 10 to 12 years old. Oh, Susan asks, are they related to meerkats? They are cousins to the meerkats. So they're not directly related, but they are close. And they are functionally similar. So the meerkats also live in the same kind of area. They, they like to eat bugs. They like to dig holes. They're just a bit different. Hey, Justin asks, what do they eat? These guys are pretty cool here at the zoo. They get a mixture of, they get crickets in the mornings, mealworms in the afternoon, they get chicks uh, in the afternoons, and they get mice in the mornings. And then sometimes if they're lucky, they get eggs and they get extra things as well. And sometimes if a grackle stays too long, they might have a grackle too. Now there are quite a few of them in here. We have 13 right now. Oh, Riley asks, where do they sleep? That's an excellent question. If it's here in the summer, they actually sleep underneath this big thing right here in the middle, this square. They like to sleep under there. During the day, they actually will do kind of a resting thing where like a whole lot of them will sit on top of the thing and they kind of look like they've just turned off. Their heads kind of like, they sink kind of in down. It's very adorable. In the winter, we have some uh, inside spaces for them if it gets too cold. And they all like to pile into one tiny box. So it's just a box full of mongooses. Animal. And this is something that they do in the wild. They like to chew, uh, dig through all of the substrate. Elise and Claire ask, how many babies can they have? They can have up to five babies at a time. And 
we have had some babies here at the zoo. Uh, not for a while though. Uh, you can tell them apart from the other ones because the babies are missing their tails. And that's kind of a thing that would happen in the wild too. These guys like to have, they have their own social pecking order. So there's people at the bottom and mongooses at the top. So the mongooses will sometimes kind of squabble with their tails. What, are the, what does their skin feel like from Jessica? Janessa? Sorry. Um, I don't know. I haven't pet them before. They are cute, but they are pretty vicious uh, when they want to be. And I know better than to try to get my hands too close. Their fur is, I would say, similar to that of like a cat or a dog or a mink, which is another a weasel that we have here in the States. Nicholas, can they swim? The, I don't really know for sure. I'm pretty sure that they can't swim. They're not usually in an area where there is a lot of water. Most of the time they're going to be digging, they're going to be foraging. They can probably make it for a bit. Tara, where do they live in the wild? They live in Sub-Saharan Africa. So they're all about uh, kind of the same-ish areas as meerkats. And uh, they like anywhere that has a lot of bugs. Sophie asks, how much do they eat? These guys eat quite a bit. So they, uh, like I said, they get one mouse in the morning, which is about this big. And they get one chick in the afternoon. And then they get uh, mealworms and crickets. And we split up the mice and chicks equally. And then the mealworms and the crickets are kind of free range, as you can see. They kind of just go in and find them as they do. You guys find anything good in there? Veronica asks, what are the stripes on their back for? So the stripes on their back are for camouflage. It helps them to blend in. They usually move through areas that are just a little bit on the shady side. So the shade uh, mixed with the sun helps them to blend in a little bit better. And when they're all together, it's kind of hard to tell where one mongoose ends and the next one begins. Ashley asks, how fast are they? Uh, we don't really clock them for their speed, but they can move pretty quick across the enclosure if they wanted to. Um, I'd say probably, we could, we could probably tie in a, in a race. Uh, they'd probably beat me by a little bit. like they're getting into some of the other shops, right? You guys want me to take it out of the boxes or you're good? Looks like they're good. What else about you guys? How many mongooses does the zoo have? Uh, Marcella asks. We have 13 at the given time. Uh, we have had more in the past, but right now we're at 13. They are all very nice. They get along fairly well. Uh, we don't really have too many incidences here. They're like a good family group. And like I said, in the winter, whenever it's cold, they actually all huddle together like a big mosh pit of mongoose. Uh, now, these guys are pretty cool. Uh, if you want to help them and help other animals here at the zoo we actually have an emergency zoo fund that you can contribute to during these hard times that we're currently in feel free to check out the web page and you will see more information about that cc asks how deep do they dig they can do they can dig pretty deep they're not going to dig too much deeper than two or three feet though they mostly like to dig down and then dig out they like to have massive burrows all under the ground but they're not very focused on digging down 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 Plus, they want to be pretty close to the surface if they need to get out and get food or get away from predators. Madeline, are they nocturnal? They are not nocturnal. They actually live uh, and eat and hunt during the day. They like to go out and forage for things. Oh, this is a difficult question. Uh, the names. Uh, unfortunately, they all look basically identical. So it's very hard for us to tell them apart. I can tell you a few of the names, but we don't have very many. Uh, we've got Jaziri and Tatu, and those are the two that I know. Uh, Jaziri, you could tell if you visit the zoo because she's the biggest one. Uh, Tatu is the one with the, the bald spot. And beyond that, I call them Mongoose A, Mongoose 1, Mongoose 3. Let's get a close-up on this egg guy. What are you doing? Don't be shy, it's fine. No, you're done now. 
Not a fan of the close-up. Ellie and Emma, do they have predators? They do have predators. Out in the wild, they're uh, kind of... Their big predators are going to be birds of prey. So there are a lot of birds of prey in Africa that really like to eat these guys. Also, uh, they have the normal African predators that you have to worry about. Lions, jackals, cheetahs, small cats, big cats. They are a very tasty looking small animal. To, <laughs> two animals in the wild. Not to me. I think they look cute and adorable. Do they live in packs? They do live in a group much like this one. They might live in a slightly larger group, but not by too much more. Uh, they do like to hang out together. Like I said, they are fairly similar to meerkats, so just like how meerkats live in a group, mongooses live in a group, or at least these ones do. The ones in India, the bigger ones, they usually are a little bit more solitary uh, than these ones are. Gosh, I've lost it. Thank you all for sending in such great questions. You're helping me out. Usually I have all of you here to ask these great questions. So now I get this, this bonus time. How long do they sleep, asked Megan. Uh, they sleep off and on through the night. They're not really the best at uh, sleeping for the whole night, probably like two or three hours tops, and then they move back. Jonathan, what is the oldest one here? Jaziri? Jaziri is uh, nine years old. And the ones here are in between ages four and ages nine. But out in the wild, they'd live to be between 10 and 12. Now, if you guys are looking for ways to help these animals out in the wild, <laughs> there are some other things you could do. Obviously, recycling is one of the big ones that we think about. Also, reduction re uh, and reusing. Any paper products, anything like that, that you can try to reuse or reduce, please feel free to do so. I know it's kind of hard right now during the quarantine. They're asking for a lot of us to do things that aren't very green but just try your best, and once we get through this, we'll make sure that the mongooses and every other animal has some good uh, environment out there afterwards. Catherine asks, what is the name of a group of mongooses? That is an excellent question. I do not know what the name of a group of mongooses is. A mob? That sounds right. A mob of mongooses. I was gonna go with a murder. No, that's gross. Emma asks, how do they protect themselves? So, uh, like I said, these guys aren't uh, without weapons. They do have very sharp teeth. They do have some pretty sharp claws. Most of the time, their claws are going to be used for digging or for sorting through the substrate like they are now. But uh, if they needed to, they could use them in order to try to scratch at their enemies, and they can bite. But more than likely, what they're going to do is they have one person, one mongoose who's standing guard, and this mongoose is going to tell them whenever something's happening, and then the rest of them are all going to rush into their burrows. That's their main defense is getting away is working as a team to avoid predators and to avoid danger. What's up, you guys? As you can see, they are reacting. There are some sounds and things going on here at the zoo today. If they ever do hear a loud sound, they will actually react as a group and they'll go and make for the tunnels, which is a very cool adaptation. Jackson asked, do their tails to con uh, continue to grow as they age? Uh, their tails is a very interesting subject, so, uh, uh, um, so the ones with full tails, usually, uh, just like your dog or cat, after a bit their tails are full grown. The ones that have the short tails were actually born here. We did a hands-off process of rearing them, so they got to hang out by themselves the whole time. And as they were hanging out by themselves, they got into little wrestling matches, and the wrestling matches ended with them nibbling off some of their tails. It doesn't actually bother them, uh, they're perfectly content with it in the wild. They would use their tails in order to get away from predators a little bit easier, a little bit more control when they're running. But here at the zoo, it doesn't affect them whether they have them or whether they don't have them. This is a perfect environment for the more rambunctious ones that don't have tails. Sophia asked, can they climb trees? Uh, they could probably climb trees, but they're not gonna be going too much towards the tree angle. Like I said, they're much more of a digger. They like to dig and live under the ground or near the ground. So if they get too big or too tall under the trees, they'll feel a little bit more vulnerable. Evelyn asks, how big do they get? Uh, Jaziri is pretty big. She weighs about a half gallon of milk. If you have one of those at home, if you pick that up, it's about that size. Uh, but that's about as big as they're gonna get, is about that size. As you can see, they are enjoying the rest of their substrate. 
Uh, this one here is kind of foraging, trying to find if there are any mealworms left. There are a few over there that are fighting over an egg right now. And then we have a few that looks like they might be using the latrine before long. Words. Uh, what else about you guys? What are you doing? They are diggers. This one is demonstrating some interesting digging habits. Now this enclosure is pretty cool. It's actually got a lot of built-in tunnels that won't collapse on them. Uh, and they can go throughout all these tunnels and get to that main box there and then out through a whole bunch of different sides. It makes them feel very secure. Heather asks, are they endangered? They are not endangered, uh, so they are pretty plentiful over in Africa. Um, yeah. Is there a leader of the group, asks Brody. Uh, there isn't really a leader. There's a most dominant one, but he's not actually like telling mongooses, you do this, you do this. Uh, Jaziri, the biggest one, is the most dominant. She gets most of the food, but she's not going to be uh, like directing the mongooses to do anything. She's not a very good leader. Um, you guys have exhausted just about all my mongoose knowledge. Do they mate for life? They do not mate for life. Uh, they are um, interesting animals. They get together uh, and they make the babies and then they split apart again. Uh, so they're not like they're not a monogamous species no mongoose as pets by jasmine no you don't want a mongoose as a pet uh any of the animals here at the zoo you don't really want as a pet most of them are wild animals which means that even though uh they are being pretty tame around me they're not actually tame uh if i were to lay down if i were to be in some kind of state they would probably try to eat me as they would you too if you had them in your house and as you can see, they're foraging, they're exploring. This is what they do in the wild. They're just trying to find anything that they can eat, anything that they can find, any new spaces. Do they like the cold? Ellie asked, do they like the cold? Uh, uh, yes. Well, ish. They like kind of cold. They like it like early January, February temperatures, but whenever it gets down below 40 or so, the only place you're going to find them is inside that box, inside their wintering area, all cuddled together, a big mongoose huddle group. What, you guys don't like that egg? Don't like that egg. Okay. Well, thank you guys very much for tuning in here today. Feel free to tune in tomorrow at 11 a.m. for our next Facebook Live event. Thank you guys very much, and I'll see you some other time. <laughs>